Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Mattel Batman Movie Masters, The Joker. We have four different versions of The Joker that were released in the Movie Masters lineup. And we're going to go ahead and kick things off here with the very first version of The Joker as seen in this lineup. Um, there were actually two versions of this Joker that were released. Um, this is the very first one that had more shadowing around the eyes and more vibrant lips, as well as the deeper coloring to the outfit. The second version that was released had more subtle eyeshadow on the eyes, as well as less vibrant coloring on the lips, as well as more subdued coloring to the outfit. All in all, this Joker is okay. Um, the silhouette isn't bad. I think he is a little bit too hunched over. And we'll give you a close-up there of the head. Uh, once again, this is the very first version of Joker. Um, and uh, the eyeshadowing is a little more prominent on him. The red uh, for the lips is more vibrant. Uh, I think it's a little overdone. Um, if anything, I would say that on the left side of his face, the makeup looks okay, but on the right side, it's a little too um, messy looking. Uh, you can see a little bit of uh, peach coloring there to represent uh, the skin underneath the makeup, which is a nice touch. Uh, there's a little bit of that around his ear as well. The hair is um, okay looking. It's uh, green with yellow and brown uh, highlighting in it. Um, it's a little funny looking. It doesn't. I think it could have been better with a, with a different type of paint, but uh, you know, it, it, it's passable. Um, the rest of the outfit is quite nice. There's um, some pretty nice detailing around the collar of his shirt, um, the tie, the vest looks okay. Um, I do think that the crotch area looks a little bit too long. Um, the chain right here is, uh, you know, plastic. It's, it's okay. Uh, and the pants, you know, pretty simple. The shoes look okay. Uh, you know, pretty old and worn looking. Um, I think that his torso does look a little too long. Um, you know, compared to what he should be. Um, the jacket, pretty nice. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, dirt that you can see on his sleeve right there, uh, as well as other areas of the coat, just to kind of give it, you know, a little bit of a more used look. So, uh, you know, pretty nice job with that. In the way of articulation, Joker has a ball hinge at the head. He has hinges at the shoulders, which are nicely concealed by uh, the lip of the uh, shoulder of the jacket. Bend at the elbow, rotation at the wrist, hinges at the hips, cut at the thigh, bend at the knee, and a very mild uh, bend there at the ankle. For accessories, Joker has uh, a very small knife. Uh, you can see the, uh, the handle of it there. The blade kind of curves up, so it's a little weird looking. Um, but, you know, hey, at least he has something, and I guess a knife is quite appropriate for his character. The second version of Joker we are looking at is uh, the Joker as he appeared in the prison holding cell scene. Proportionately speaking, I think that his physique is a lot more realistic for this figure, a lot more properly balanced. He's still lanky like the other Joker figure, but uh, it, it's definitely more realistic. As we take a closer look at his head sculpt, uh, you can see that it's much better than the original Joker, which I'll go ahead and bring back in here just for a second. Um, you know, definitely more uh, realistic. There's a lot more going on with uh, the paintwork and the shadowing and stuff. And I think it looks more like Heath Ledger than the original one did. The eyes look quite menacing. It's kind of like a death stare kind of thing where, you know, you don't want to know what's going to happen next. Um, the paint around the eyes is a lot more sprayed looking, uh, which makes it look a little more natural. And the lips, the scarring on the lips is much better than the other figure. Um, the, the paint is, uh, you know, it's a little more subdued, um, but it looks better for that reason. And uh, I like the hairline on it. I think they did a better job with the hairline on this guy. Uh, same with the coloring. The coloring is kind of like a green with some uh, brown streaking. Uh, you know, definitely an improvement over the first figure. Uh, I really like the shirt on this guy. It definitely uh, has a lot of detail and patterning that was, uh, you know, taken into consideration. Uh, it's got the tie there. Nice creasing and folds there on the uh, the vest. Um, pants are pretty nice. And then uh, shoes are pretty similar to the original figure. For articulation, Joker has a ball hinge at the head. Hinges at the shoulders. Bends at the elbow 
rotation at the wrist, hinges at the hips, cut at the thigh, bend at the knee, and then a very mild bend here at the ankle. In the way of accessories, this joker comes with a bazooka as seen in The Dark Knight. So a really awesome accessory. It's got a smiley face uh, painted on there. The bottom side of it merely says smile. Um, you know, very large and a very nice accessory. I almost feel like it was originally meant to uh, to launch the rocket. Uh, it looks like this may have originally been planned to be a button or something where the missile would shoot out, you know, which would have been pretty cool. But, um, you know, definitely not uh, needed. Uh, nice little viewfinder right there. Joker holds the bazooka fairly well. It is a little bit heavy, so it kind of does tend to topple over with it. But if you play around with it long enough, uh, eventually you can kind of get it to stand without too much trouble. You can also pose him holding the rocket launcher by the handle, which also looks quite nice. The third version of Joker in the Movie Master series is Bank Robber Joker. And I really like this one just because I think that even though it's a very simple figure, uh, it was executed really nicely. Really nice silhouette. Uh, this body has actually been reused multiple times for different uh, figures in the Movie Masters lineup, ranging from Harvey Dent to Ra's al Ghul to Scarecrow and uh, all of the Joker thug figures from the bank robbery scene. But I definitely think that it, it works really well with this uh, figure. The head is fantastic. The eyes are just very absent. You know, it has a very uh, sinister look to it. And uh, the paint on the mask itself is really nice. I really like the coloring that they use there for the blue and the uh, magenta type burgundy coloring that's on there. Uh, there's a bit of a dirtier look to the top of the head. Um, the hair is really nice. Uh, the way that the band kind of just holds it in place, you know, it just looks really good. Um, the body, you know, again, it, it's pretty simple. But, uh, you know, it's done just right. Uh, they did a pretty nice level of detailing there for the undershirt. Um, the jacket, you know, it's like the deep grayish purple uh, that he had in the film. The hands have, uh, you can see a little bit of flesh there, uh, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, the gloves themselves look quite nice. And uh, the shoes, really digging the shoes here. That's a detail that they could have, you know, just neglected. But uh, because they opted to put it in there and paint the shoes as he had them in the film, uh, you know, makes me appreciate this figure even more. For articulation, he has a ball hinge at the head, ball hinges at the shoulders, cut at the bicep, bends at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, swivel at the waist, hinges at the hips, cut at the thigh, bend at the knee, and very mild bend there at the ankle. Uh, I'm actually not quite sure why they even bothered doing this with these figures because you really can't get uh, much movement. I mean, I suppose it helps somewhat with posing, but it's probably something they could have left out. The figure doesn't have any accessories, um, but it would have been cool if they would have at least included like a, you know, a pistol or something uh, as seen in the film. And the final Joker we're looking at is uh, Joker in his honor guard disguise. This is also a pretty nice figure. The silhouette isn't half bad. Um, you know, this is the same body we just saw um, with the previous bank robber Joker, but with um, a different jacket. Um, so it's fairly simple, but uh, you know, it works quite well. The head there is pretty good. Um, it's not great by any means, but uh, you know, it, it is passable. It looks enough like Heath Ledger. Overall though, I think it's pretty good. Um, the, the detail on his face for the scars, I think is uh, you know one of the uh, better things about this figure. Uh, and then he, of course he has the dark circles that, you know, that uh, Joker had in that scene. Um, the hat's not removable, but it's pretty nice. The jacket has, um, some uh, decoration there, uh, I guess uh, indicating perhaps his rank or uh, I'm not sure if that's like a badge or medal or something. Uh, there's a little bit of a shape of a flag. Uh, they didn't paint that. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, it was painted in the film or not, but uh, you know, that's what that is. Buttons are nicely painted, nice gold coloring. Uh, the rest of the outfit is pretty simple, but you know, it matches the film. Uh, for articulation, he has a ball hinge at the head, hinges at the shoulders, Cut at the bicep, bend at the elbow, silver at the wrist, silver at the waist, hinges at the hips, cut at the thigh, bend at the knee, and again, a mild bend there at the ankle. For accessories, Joker comes with his honor guard rifle. Um, it's a fairly simple accessory. There's not a whole lot to it, but I think it is pretty adequate in terms of appearance. 
The downside about this rifle is that he can't really hold it that well. Uh, you can't even really put it on his shoulder because this is very stiff and uh, this is too narrow to get it around him. This here is about as well as I can do with it. It's just uh, it's very inconvenient how they didn't make a way for him to hold it a little bit better. His thumb cannot grip, uh, you know, the little notch underneath there. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of an awkward way for him to uh, to carry the accessory. I do find that it works a little bit better if you just kind of have him holding it there at the side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. These are the Mattel Batman Movie Masters, the Joker figures. Um, all in all, they're pretty nicely done. Uh, I'd have to say my favorite is the one with the uh, bazooka. I think he has the best overall uh, aesthetic that's a little bit more realistic than the original Joker. Um, I kind of wish they would have done a Joker 2.0 where they would have taken this Joker, given him a jacket and you know a little bit more cleaner paint on the face. Uh, that would have made me really happy. Um, but, you know, as it is, this is what we got. Bank Robber Joker is also really, really nicely done. Um, Honor Guard Joker is pretty nice. Uh, if you're going to get any of these, I would definitely say that the um, Bazooka Joker is probably going to be the way to go. But hey, um, you know, if you're like me, you're a big fan of the Heath Ledger Joker, then you're definitely going to want to have all of them in your collection. I definitely think, though, that um, Bazooka Joker and Bank Robber Joker are the two best figures out of the four. Uh, remember, if there are any other Batman Movie Masters you would like me to review, let me know. I have pretty much all of them, and I will be happy to get a review done for you. Just let me know what you want to see. Thanks for watching Victoria's Cantina. Till next time. Bye-bye.